Hello and welcome to the Herbs with Rosalie podcast. I'm your host, Rosalie de la Forêt, and today I'm delighted to be here with my good friend and fellow herbalist, Cami McBride. I've learned so much from Cami's wisdom and experience over the years, and she's also really fun to just hang out and chat with, which I do a lot as well. You may already know Cami as the author of The Herbal Kitchen and her many online courses, which help you build confidence and skill to use herbs in your daily life for prevention and herbal self-care. Cami's 30 plus years of teaching herbal medicine is steeped in her calling to inspire a culture that embraces taking care of our bodies with healing herbs, a deep connection with the earth, and a lifestyle that passes this knowledge on to our children. Cami has taught herbal medicine at the University of California, San Francisco School of Nursing and the Integral Health Master's Program at the California Institute of Integral Studies. She's helped thousands of families learn how to use herbs for prevention and self-care. Welcome to the Herbs with Rosalie podcast, Cami. I'm so thrilled to have you here today. Oh, I love being here, Rosalie. I love what you're doing. I love how much you share with everybody and the impact and just how much people can learn from you. And I'm so grateful to be here and be part of that. Oh, thank you very much. Well, I just want to dive right in, Cami. I know because we're friends and I've been following you for so long that you had a pretty dramatic entryway into the world of herbalism and medicinal plants. So I'm wondering if you would share about that. You know, what led up to you finding the plant world? Yeah, there's a couple things. There's, there's one was the dramatic part is I had to have a surgery that was a result of a side effect of a medication, but it, it's actually started a little bit before that. The thing is, um, my grandparents were foragers. My grandfather was Ooh. a wild mushroom forager. He it was of Scottish heritage. Um, my great 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 grandparents on uh, multiple lines came from came uh, to California from Scotland, and they brought mushroom knowledge with them. And so they were voracious foragers and gleaners. I mean, they were like, Ooh. pull over, there's a fig tree, you know. <laughs> and it's and so my father, my grandfather, I spent a lot of time with him and he told me that there was nothing that made him happier than just being out in that field with nobody else and those mushrooms. And so mm-hmm. this love of the earth's harvest and abundance and generosity and just looking for the wild things, um, he instilled that in me. And he actually um, in the 1960s, started the first nature camp in our area. And so I was part of that. And because he, he said, like in 1962, well, the, the problem with today's youth is they don't spend enough time in nature. Hmm. <laughs> so he's, that was in the 60s, right? 1960s. So he started a nature camp mm-hmm. and I was part of that. And it was during that, that I went on my very first herb walk. And I remember everything that person said, you know, the very mm-hmm. first plant that I was introduced to, I was like, oh my God. And since that herb walk, oh, don't, I like, don't leave me hanging. You have to tell me what the first plant that you were introduced to was. Oh, uh, yellow dock. Oh, lovely. Yellow dock. It was a wild <laughs> weed in the fields where we went. And so he introduced us to re- uh, yellow dock and red root mm-hmm. and fennel. And, you know, like, I don't remember a lot when I was eight years old, you know, but that I have tunnel vision to that memory. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. And so so I, ever since that day, I was just always ever looking for the threads of like, oh, you can eat that. Oh, you can drink that. You know, I was just, it was just, I was caught. And the thing is that, you know, I mean, my family, they weren't herbalists. They still reached for medication for everything as the first option uh, for anything that was going on. And, you know, I mean, I had never heard the word herbalism or holistic health or anything like that, but they had this food wisdom intact, right? That, that, that was a big part of, I think, why I was attracted to herbs in the first place. But when I was a teenager, I developed a brain tumor that was a result of taking a medication. And so at 19 years old, I went into surgery, not knowing if I had cancer on my brain or, you know, whatever. And after that surgery, my doctor said, you get off that medication. Your doctor's not going to tell you this, but I do surgery all week long because of that medication. And so 
I, you know, needless to say at 19, you're not really paying very much attention. But after that, I started paying a lot of attention. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, okay. The world is not as it seems, right? I mean, that's really, it was like a veil was lifted. And so I was very close with my grandparents and I went to their house and I looked in their medication cabinet and I saw all their medications. I was just like, oh my God. And I started reading all the side of, you know, that little piece of paper that comes with the medication that tells you about the possible side effects. Like you actually want to read that, you know? Um, and so I remember sitting in their home, just going, there must be another way. I, I, there, I, is there, I asked the question, isn't there another way? I remember asking that question. And as you probably know, Rosalie, like so much of our lives are guided by the questions we ask, right? Mm -hmm. And so I asked that question and then one thing led to another and somehow like by the grace of like some miraculous, <laughs> I don't know what, I ended up on the windy road to the California of Herbal Studies and landed with Rosemary Gladstar in 1986. Mm -hmm. and, and it was, you know, every one thing led to another, right? And my first couple hours with her I remember more vividly and I learned more than I did in the five years I had just spent in college. <laughs> hmm. No doubt. Yeah. That's something I talked to another podcast guest about and like Rosemary has so much presence. I mean, that woman is obviously hooked in and just to be with her is this, an experience that is unforgettable. And yeah. yeah, at such a young age in a culture where nobody profess, you know, it was, I mean, that was a different era, you know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I was just like, okay, I'm here now. I remember my parents, everybody would be like, what, you know, herbalism wasn't on the radar. Nobody had even heard of elderberry syrup. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I just, there I was. And I just, you know, I proceeded to just spend the next 10 years traveling. You know, you, you couldn't find that, you know, there was no internet. And so I just went from and lived and traveled for about 10 years, just studying with whoever I could find. You know, mm -hmm. I would pick up and go to New Mexico. I'd pick up and went to the Catskill. You know, I was just like, oh, I heard about this teacher. I'm going there, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what it was like for me. And it's just been one continuous journey. <laughs> and uh, and I'm still here. <laughs> I'm so grateful that you're so here. And I love hearing that story, especially just it, like in, you know, it wasn't that long ago, but in, in the different world, it is such a long time ago, like you said, before internet, before, I mean, back then, you know, there was the, you know, maybe five herbal books that you could commonly find. And it's a very different world we live in now. And it, it's good to remember those times and just how much herbalism is changing, um, you know, through these decades. Yeah, yeah. It's a slower learning. I mean, I remember hearing about this medicine woman up in the foothills, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to go up there. And I went up there and camped out in her yard and worked in her garden and just followed her around her kitchen, you know, like, mm -hmm. you can do that. You can, you know, it was just, mm -hmm. you know, it was a slower learning, but it, you were, it was, it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Cami, I am today. We're going to spend some time sharing about a beautiful, calming, aromatic plant, lavender. And my first question is what inspired you to choose lavender for today, Cami? <laughs> Oh gosh, lavender. You know, lavender is just one of those herbs that I think it's so versatile and there are really are fewer herbs, few herbs that I know of that are just immersed in my life. I can't think of one that's more immersed in my life than lavender. Mm -hmm. And also again talking about like when I started, you know, if I was always like you got to learn about herbs. You got, Hey, everybody, herbs, herbs. And people were like, you're so weird. And so I couldn't talk about new herbs. I couldn't talk about. So I had to find something that people would go, Oh, wow. Hmm. And so lavender was one of my mm -hmm. entryway herbs that I would like turn people on to a lavender lotion, a lavender, you know, and, and they're like, wow, you can do that with lavender. And so it was a great entryway herb for so many people to, you know, so that I wouldn't feel so alone. <laughs> <laughs> and so it has been one of my great loves, you know, and it and continues to be to this day. And I can share I can share with you like all the different ways that I use it in my life. I'd love to hear about. Yeah, <laughs> I love the practical. I love to see how people actually bring the herbs to life. Okay, off the paper you, you, into our lives. <laughs> are you ready? Okay, so first of all, <laughs> it's just there's so many, you know, like the vinegars. Like I love lavender vinegar, um, mm. and I make lavender rosemary vinegar, 
and um, it's in my culinary oils. It's in my cordials. Oh my gosh. Oh, this one, this, I have a cordial here. It's almost gone. I need to make some more. <laughs> um, I have a lavender nectarine cordial and it's really amazing. It makes a great body powder. So you can just use um, some cornstarch and powdered lavender and use that as an antifungal foot, rub, you know, for a fungus on your feet, or just if you're sweating, this is what I use if I'm sweating too much. Mm -hmm. And also it's really good on food. In my book, The Herbal Kitchen, I have Happy Life Seasoning which has um, lavender, fennel, rose, cinnamon. So it can, it's great for marinades and chicken and salmon and tuna fish sandwiches and grilled <laughs> vegetables, right? And I, I mean, it just goes on and on, right? It's also uh, a wonderful, it's one of the, you know, I do salt, one of my self-care things is that I do salt glows twice a week. And mm. so rosemary, lavender, salt glow is one of my main go-to salt glows. And Can also, you talk a bit about that, Cami? Like, what is a salt glow and how do you use it? Yeah. Okay, good. Good question. <laughs> a salt glow is salt. It can just be salt and oil and or it can be salt and powdered herbs and oil. So usually I take a mm -hmm. cup of, of salt, like just sea salt, and I'll put in a tablespoon of powdered lavender and a tablespoon of powdered roses. And then I'll put in two cups of, you know, you can use any kind of, you can use olive oil or sesame oil. And then I keep this in my bathroom. And then, you know, I get, get in the shower, I get wet and I scrub the lavender, you know, the oil and the salt all over my body. I turn the shower off. I let it, you know, I let it sit for a couple of minutes and then I wash it off and it increases mm. circulation. It helps to get rid of dead skin. It's um, it increases your mental clarity because it just gets everything moving. And for me, it helps with the blues. Like if I'm feeling like a little, like, mm -hmm. I don't know, something like something's just kind of stuck, I'll do a salt glow and phew, I feel better. So it's a really major self-care tool that I use on a regular mm -hmm. basis. No, I love that. I love too that I think a lot of people would put lavender essential oil in there. And something that you and I have in common is that we love working with the whole plant. And it's not that I never use essential oils, but if I can just get, you know, the essence of the whole plant in there, that's my preferred method because I'm there from start to finish with the plant. So I love that that's, you know, pow whole powdered lavender. Yeah, well, absolutely. And that's one of the things that I have sitting on my cabinet next or on my counter next to where I cook hmm. is I powder up lavender really finely and it's and then this can go in a teaspoon can go into your pancakes right hmm. a teaspoon can go into your muffins a teaspoon can go into whatever kind of cake or pie crust or so this I keep powdered lavender in where I cook Right. And so anytime I'm using any kind of like bread kind of cooking, I'd like to say it goes in scones, but I don't make scones. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great tip. I don't know that I've really used a lot of powdered lavender in, in ready or baked goods. I do love lavender infused into milks, like any kind of milk yep. from dairy to oat. It just gets that flavor so yes. good. So yes. I like making, you know, kind of like a flan or you know, custard lavender ice cream mm. is so delicious. Um, lavender milk, you can get all frothy, so yummy. Yeah. yeah, it's not one that I think a lot of, you know, it's not like oregano or, you know, basil or something in terms of like people thinking about using it in sweet or savory dishes, but it, it does have such an interesting aroma and taste. I will say for me, I like it like less. You can overdo lavender really easily. Yeah, you just a little bit. Just a little bit, yeah. Just a little bit. It has that little like hint. It's like a hint. When mm -hmm. the recipe says a hint, you know, you just like a a little bit and it just adds, a, it, first of all, it adds yeah. all the preventative properties and then it just that little like, hmm, what is that, right? And the other way you can do that is by making salt. So you can make, you can just take your, your Himalayan salt and you put powdered, uh, I like to put powdered sage and lavender in, in the, and just have this, you know, powdered lavender, sage, salt next to where I do marinades and things like mm. that. And, and it goes into salad dressing. So it really is a culinary herb. Absolutely. You know, one thing I, um, I began to really appreciate lavender as I spent more time in France. I think, honestly, I think a little bit, I kind of overlooked lavender because you think of it as like the smell that detergent has or whatever, you know, it gets used a lot um, just as a scent and so I kind of overlooked it. And then going to France and spending time there, 
they really bring lavender to life in so many ways. And I remember when I was at studying at university there, my favorite sandwich shop would do that, you know, like had a salt lavender, um, you know, spread that they put on the sandwiches. And I would eat that sandwich almost every day. I thought it was so good and so much fun. And then another way that I really came to appreciate it as well is that, of course, Southern France is renowned for their lavender. And, you know, you can see all those like fields of kind of monoculture lavender, but lavender actually is native there. And so it grows just, you know, as a native plant. And that was a really fun thing to see. You know, it's not this huge, big bush that's been like coddled. It's kind of this, you know, more of it can be more of a scraggly looking plant, but there's right. lavender growing, you know, natively in its natural habitat. And what I learned from that experience was all the different ways that lavender can smell. You know, we think of like lavender scent, but that doesn't really exist, right? It's like lavender smells so differently, can vary even in our, you know, gardens or around where we live. We don't have to go to France to experience this, but lavender that has more sunshine or less sunshine, lavender in full bloom versus just in the buds, yep. different yep. species of lavenders. So there's just like this with all plants, <laughs> this never ending spiral of things that we get to love and appreciate and get to know lavender uh, with. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, so you've got your culinary use. And, you know, I also the, the other thing that's that I really learned about lavender over time is I love pairing lavender. So mm -hmm. like for me, I love lavender and eucalyptus for the bath. Mm -hmm. I make these bundles for the shower in the bath. And I love lavender. Have you lavender St. John's wort oil is like mm -hmm. those two oils together. That is a match that, I don't know, is just amazing, right? And so I have like little tiny giveaway. I, I give away so many bottles of lavender St. John's wort oil. And just, they're just hmm. these little tiny bottles. Like you have a headache here. Here's some lavender St. John's wort. Oh, you have a muscle ache here, you know? So I carry these like small, like roll-on bottles and spray bottles with lavender oil. And they're, you know, to help people with muscle pain and um, with tension, head tension, muscle tension, cramps, that kind of thing. And so that's another really, you know, your oil, your lavender oil is just, is so incredible for the bath, for your feet, for your, for your tense neck muscles, right? Mm -hmm. so I love lavender oil. I, I love that. I think of lavender, like one thing I think about in my own head with lavender is like having a lavender moment. You think about, you know, just mm -hmm. like a busy life where we can just get going faster and faster. And there's something about lavender. I mean, it's just, it's one of the many gifts of lavender that it invites us to pause, to slow down, to relax. And so many of the things that you shared, even, you know, whether it's culinary and adding lavender to a meal where you get to savor it or for tension headaches, body aches, pains, uh, time, you know, with the body scrub and the shower uh, in the bathtub, all of those things invite us to appreciate lavender, not only in the gifts inherent in lavender, but it's kind of like coupled with that is the moments of space that lavender helps to grant us as well. I love that you brought that up. I, I, that, that not a lot of people talk about that so much. And I love that you, that you talk about that, you know, so I, when I started you know, on my path of, is there another way? I started massage school, herb school, and yoga teacher training all at the same time. Hmm. <laughs> and so it. it was all about the body, the breath, and the plants. And so mm -hmm. one of the very first place I started with the plants was the breath, you know, because of the yoga. And mm -hmm. so it's like, what is it that, and so I learned this from the plants and my students, like, what is it that can take somebody from like, oh God, uh, you know, mm, I'm kind of bummed out or whatever. And then they, they go from, uh, to uh, in a fraction of a second from, uh, to, oh, uh, in a fraction of a second, it's smelling lavender. They go, oh, wow. And so it's not like they stay there for maybe the next two hours, but that moment of like breath in breathing, you know, the shoulders drop, like that changes your reality in that second. And as we know, like stress isn't about like, oh, I'm going to live a stress-free lifestyle. Stress mm -hmm. is about having enough moments of, of that during your day that your stress doesn't end up at an eight at the end of the day. You know, mm -hmm. you can knock it back with those moments. Like you were talking about those lavender moments, like the I'm going to breathe in. I'm going to get present. I'm going to like even smile because the plant's making me smile. You know, those are the moments that as you're climbing your, your, maybe your stress ladder throughout the day, those moments 
keep you down and they they keep you from you know overdoing it at the end of the day and this very profound healing i mean that is healing you know if we can heal ourselves a little bit at a time decompress a little bit at a time all day long that's like that's what you said that's a lavender moment and i love that you've shared so many ways to practically bring lavender into your life too and i'm making that med- that lavender medicine is part of the healing process and Again, I don't really mean to like poo-poo essential oils because I'm not, I don't have anything against them. But for me to like open up a bottle that I have no con- real connection with and smell it, obviously, you know, lavender smells good. I use it in my salves, et cetera. But to work with the whole plant and do these things like the lavender vinegar, lavender and foods, lavender scrubs, that is just so much more fun for me because that's a deeper connection with the plant, the world around me and lavender moments. <laughs> Yeah, so you can also uh, wash your wash your counter and wash your walls with lavender vinegar, mm, and nice. I make a lavender elderflower lip balm. <laughs> <laughs> nice, it's nice, your lips nice, you know, and that's like interaction on your lips, like the plant on your lips all day long. You want to <laughs> learn about a plant? Get it on your lips every day, you know, <laughs> like uh, d- digest it into that tissue and smell it and taste it. It's such a great way to learn, you know. You're giving me so many great ideas of things I haven't tried with lavender that I'm excited to do. And it makes me just realize, I mean, this is so true of many plants, but I'm just thinking this about lavender right now. Somebody could spend an entire year or perhaps their entire herbal lifetime just working with lavender. I mean, there's so many things that you can do with lavender and um, even just spending time with a lavender plant is a gift amongst itself and watching it go through the seasons. I mean, it's just never ending with lavender. It's, it's true. It, I mean, I've, I've taught a course called a day of lavender, you know, where we make hmm. the, the lavender, like these little lavender bundles. And, hmm. and I don't know, are you into good old fashioned potpourri, right? You know, like you just hmm. have like roses and lavender on your counter in your house so that you can walk by and take a hit anytime you want. Like, oh, okay, <laughs> I feel better. I can't lavender quite make rose it out moment. into the garden. I'm too busy. So I've got this potpourri here, you know. Mm -hmm. lovely well Kemi you've mentioned that lavender is carminative so it's helping with digestion you've mentioned it for headaches you've mentioned it for sore muscles we've mentioned it I love everything you said about stress and the stress ladder so we've talked about it in that way is there anything else that you'd like to add about the many gifts of lavender um you know there it's so many I mean I I also think it's a great plant for a nervous stomach, intestinal discomfort. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing like chamomile, lavender, fennel tea. It solves Mm -hmm. all bad potluck combinations, all (laughs) travel meal that's just not my biome, you know, (laughs) like that tea, I carry that tea with me. And because lavender tea by itself is a little intense, but if you smooth it out with the chamomile and the fennel, like I love that for all things, just kind of like acute, you know, intestinal just funk, right? Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, the liniment and the oil for your, for your muscle tension and cramps. I use um, hops, chamomile, no hops, lavender, St. John's wort oil for low back pain cramps and menstrual cramps. But I think it's really like what you're talking about, the lavender moment, that is the most powerful, you know, and that's also Mm -hmm. why I use it so much in my crafting. So you know, I'm a, I'm a crafter. If you come to my house and you bring kids, there's going to be a lavender project, you know, <laughs> so I've got my lavender and my thread and all my beads. And, you know, we're going to, we're going to make something. We're going to make little, little lavender bundles <laughs> or little lavender pillows. And so you get to take it home with you when you come to my house. I always, and that crafting mm-hmm is another way of embodying it, right? And another Mm -hmm. way of really um, increasing your scent scape and increasing your like kind of craving for, oh, that, that, those herbal smells, those herbal aromas that heal us, right? And so you have this little bundle or this little pillow in your car or your kids play with it, you know, that it's in their (laughs) bed and they play with it before they go to Mm -hmm. sleep. You know, it just trains their brain, trains their scentscape to something more than the detergent aisle in the store. Yeah, that's so true. Like, like what is the well, smell of something real? I mean, lavender, we are bombarded with, with um, 
chemical lavender scent. Like just walk, you know, like I said, just walk down the body care or the, the washing, the detergent aisle. Those scents are chemical. They're chemical. They're endocrine disrupting. They're, they're harmful to our hormones. And but we get trained. Our brain gets trained to be like, oh, that smells good. And so when you have these little, you know, just little bags and little bundles and little things of herbal, like I make herbal hearts out of, then it retrains your scentscape to know like what's real and what's not real. And that's part of what we need to do as adults and to our children. They are marketed to all the time that you shouldn't have a smell and, and you got to cover up your smell and everything they cover up their smell with is, is toxic. So mm -hmm. if you can get people in your life to start playing with herbs and smelling what's real, that has a very long, that can have a really big impact in their life over time. Uh, so true, Cammie. Yeah, I, I feel like I have so many ideas now, things that I can't wait to to do with lavender and also makes me think, you know, years ago, you were kind enough to make it all the way up north to visit me. So when I make it down south to visit you, that's what I'm going to request that. I'm gonna be like, okay, it's lavender craft with Cami time. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's so fun. <laughs> well, Cammie, you know, one of the many things that I love about herbalism is the creative ways that people bring it to life. And so I'm curious what, what herbal projects you have going on right now that you'd like to share with us. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, you know, I'm all about the herbal oils. I, you know, again, when I started, uh, when I very first started, Rosemary said in class, don't, if you can't eat it, don't put it on your skin. And then I'd go to massage school and everybody would be slathering like this chemical petroleum. And I was like, well, Rosemary said, if you can't eat it, don't put it on your skin. So I, I listened to her. And so I started hmm. making herbal oils and bringing them to all the massage therapists and all everybody. And then, so that's how they, I got drafted to teach my first class on herbal oils was because hmm. all the massage therapists were like, what is that? And so I'm still just really really passionate about the herbal oils and um, getting herbal oils into people's lives. I have a free workshop happening on that right now that people can get into. And the oils, they're just, they are the answer to so many things. <laughs> I feel like the oils, like, I feel like that they're a very powerful uh, gateway modality for herbalism because, you know, to be an herbalist, even studying for three, four, five years, it really comes through embodiment. You can study, but it, be, it really comes through embodying the art. And so what can you do every day and the people around you can join in so that it becomes cultural? You want to establish an herbal culture, not just something that you do so that the people around you can engage, right? And so, you know, I mean, I make teas, but the people around me are like, eh. But I make the salve and the lotion and the lip balm and the foot rubs and everybody's like, whoa, I want to do that, right? So I just feel like the oils are such a great way to get every, not just embody the art for yourself, but to get other people around you. And so it's really about, you know, informing humanity, creating a cultural shift. And the oils can do that. They're so safe, you know, they've got first aid, they've got prevention, they've got uh, how to resolve, you know, they have, there's so many uses and they're so safe. I had no idea that it was going to be the very first class I taught and still all these years later be like oils, herbal oils. <laughs> and really, I do, I feel like elderberry syrup is really popular, fire, you know, there's all these things that have kind of made it into, into the popular culture, but I still feel like the herbal infused oils, people really don't get how amazing they are for you. Yeah, I totally agree. And I love how passionate you are about oils because I am too. I feel like sometimes that there's something about tinctures that a lot of people just find really alluring and they get a lot of hype. But for me, I'll go weeks without ever taking an herbal tincture, but there's yeah. not a day that goes by that I don't use an herbal infused oil. And so it's something that is just so nourishing. And like you said, occasionally people will contact me and be like, hey, you know, a friend, family, and I'll say, I, I could use a tincture of this or whatever. But when it comes to the herbal infused oils, like, you know, face oils, lotions, body butters, creams, lip balms, those are the things that my friends and family are requesting, like with fervor, right? <laughs> it's not like, hey, I could use this. It's like, when are you making the next batch of lip balm? Because I want to be sure I'm on the list. So yeah, it's one of my most favorite herbal preparations. And your tutorial is so excellent. And, you know, for the listeners, as you probably know by now, I love to share recipes when we talk about these plants, because 
Recipes are just a wonderful way for you to get involved and create your own experience with herbs. So it's not just about listening to whoever has the mic, right? It's about your own experiences. And I'm really excited for the recipe sharing that Cami has for you because instead of simply sharing a recipe card, Cami has this whole video series and tutorial on how to make lavender infused oil. That's different than lavender essential oil. This is something that you get to create with your own hands using whole herbs. So to get your free access to the lavender infused oil tutorial, you wanna either look in the video description below to get the link or head to herbswithrosaliepodcast.com to get the complete show notes and the link to the lavender infused oil tutorial. And I know that people are gonna love this. I love this tutorial myself. I've watched it before and it's just excellent. And, and then you get to bring all the many gifts of lavender into your life. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's a good uh, tutorial because you can just see it in real time. You know, you can watch it instead of reading a, a recipe. And it's for beginning oil makers if you want to start out right and not have all the decade of mold experiences that I had or like, hmm, all of these batches were good except for this one. I can't figure out why. If you want to just skip over that, it's a good tutorial. And even if you're if you've been making dabbling or making oil for years, um, just because of the level of how, you know, definitely well over a thousand gallons of oil that I've made. <laughs> it seems crazy. I guarantee you'll learn something, even if you're a longtime oil maker. I have a lot of uh, longtime oil makers that just go, wow, how did I, you know, so it's, it's good for beginners and people at all, all levels of wanting to up their medicine making game. Absolutely. I definitely agree with that. You know, there's always so much to learn and your experience and creativity gives us even more to dive into. Well, Cammy, the last question I have is one that I'm asking all of my guests in season one. And I'm it's really you know been fun to hear the many responses to this question. I'm looking forward to hearing yours. So the question is, with all the challenges that we're facing today, what are some of the ways the herbs instill hope in you? Oh gosh. That's a that's a deep question, Rosalie you know, the earth is alive. The earth is beauty. It's like, what is our paradigm? What's our cultural paradigm? And so for me, the plants, they capture me. They stop me in me tr my tracks. They remind me of the web. They remind me to go wide, to take a breath, right? And they remind me of just like the mystery. It's it's like, I, I don't have to know if there's heaven or hell or, or, or what. I can just be with the plants and be like, wow, how did we get here? And and fall in love with the mystery of of not knowing, you know. When I do that, I love this spiritual practice that the plants pull me into of just feeling connected. And how is it that they help my worries go away or my troubles? Or how can I hand my hand my my concerns over to the stars and the intoxicating scent of the plants, right? And so I do. I feel like go I go to the altar of the plants to remind me that there's so much to be grateful for. Um, there's so much I don't understand. They also just have such a teaching of generosity, the generosity that they give and that I, they always are reminding me of. And, and also just being part of the turning of the wheel, right? No, no matter what stress is going on or what joy or whatever, the, the, the wheel turns, the earth, the lavender peaks, and then it immediately turns toward the opposite and it wanes, right? Mm -hmm. And he, it's like, it's just constant turning of the wheel, no matter what I'm doing, the earth can always reflect, you know, I'm part of that cycle and that season and that continual turning. And you, you just, you know, you start working an eight hour day and you forget about the cycle. And so I can always have something about myself um, be reflected in the earth. You know, it's, it's like, she always reminds me, the plants always remind me of the rhythms of the waxing and waning of, of life. Yeah. I, I think that's part of it. It's like, I love being part of that and learning and watching and seeing how my life is always reflected in the earth and how I can participate more deeply as a human. Thank you. That's a beautiful sharing, Cami, and so much of how I feel too. Thank you for giving voice to that. And thank you for being here with us today and sharing your passion for lavender. And uh, I would love to hear what people are inspired to make and enjoy with lavender. So um, feel free to put that in the comments below. I'm looking forward to seeing all that because I feel like there, you've given us so many so many directions to go in. So really appreciate <laughs> it all and really excited that um, you were able to join me here today, Cami. 
Oh, thank you, Rosalie. I love I, I love your podcast. I love your YouTube channel. And I just feel I'm so grateful that I, I get on there and I'm like, oh, I hadn't thought about that before, you know? Mm. So I'm, I love learning from you also. Oh, that's exactly how I feel about you, Cammie. So thank you. <laughs> All right. Have a beautiful day, Cammie. Yeah. For the listeners, don't forget to head over to herbswithrosaliepodcast.com to get free access to Cammie's lavender infused oil tutorial. Also available are the complete show notes, including the transcript. Before you go, be sure to click the subscribe button so you'll be the first to get my new videos, including interviews like this. I'd also love to hear what you thought about this interview and your relationship with lavender. Leave your comments below. I deeply believe that this world needs more herbalists and plant-centered folks. I'm so glad that you're here as a part of this herbal community. Have a beautiful day.